All right, Mallory, on the phone. Well, first, let me say my game of the week is Texas State, Troy. And appropriately, on the phone, is the guy who probably earned one of his biggest wins so far at Texas State, Jake Spavadol, head coach. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing well, man. How you been? I've been good, man. Been good. Uh, man, you guys done partying over there? It looked like a, <laughs> it looked like a pretty big after party uh, on the field after that game last week. <laughs> yeah, it was uh... – you know, like it was probably one of the better crowds I've ever seen at Texas State in my time here. Yeah. Uh, you know, like a little over 25,000. I think it was the seventh largest uh, all time in the history of our school. And I, I think it was the largest conference game, uh, you know, crowd that we've ever had. And, uh, man, it was awesome. It was a, it was a great uni- uh, great night for our university and our program. And uh, just to watch him celebrate and kind of enjoy everything, it was, it was pretty fun to be a part of. How much does that help the football team, right? Like, I mean, we, we talk about home crowds and just the impact that they can have on a game. But, but as a coach, as a former player who's been on a lot of sidelines, like, what is the tangible benefit of, of having that kind of support? Oh man, I think it. I think it's very important. You know that home field advantage. You know it, it's very tough to go win on the road, and and you, you sit there and you. This was the first game where I I could feel the crowd like on and on situational downs for App State. You know, and, uh, you know, when you have that and, and they have to kind of start talking through communication and maybe go to a silent count and, and start, you know, kind of changing everything just due to the kind of the chaos that the crowd is bringing that home field advantage. Uh, I'm telling you, there, there's a lot of thought. There's a lot of uh, kind of psychological warfare going on at the same time. So, uh, you know, it, it is very important. And, uh, you know, this was uh, really the first time that I, I've really noticed it. And uh, they just kind of really our players just kept feeding off the energy of that crowd and uh, it, it was kind of cool to see and uh you know like once we started kind of getting some momentum and like when the fans started engaging even more you could see just the the confidence in our players just keep building so that home field advantage and a great crowd it is definitely uh is uh, something that is uh very important in college football what did you guys kind of uh see in that game because i thought that was one of the best fluid offensive performance you guys have put together i know the defense we'll talk about the defense in a bit putting them in good situations but i thought the offensive line protected hatcher well i thought he looked decisive you know what what did you guys kind of see and adjust on your end to take advantage of what they were showing yeah a lot of it man we've had a lot of moving parts you know um you know like when we were in james madison we had eight of our starters go down and uh, you know, on offense. So like, you know, we had seven different O-line units go through that entire game and, you know, we've done a, a, a decent job of just trying to mix and match like, you know, our, our best players out there from an offensive line standpoint. So, you know, I, we, we ended up like kind of figuring out what our best unit was and, and how we could protect them a little bit more. I didn't ever really put the O-line in situations that were going to have to be sustaining, uh, trying to block those defensive ends. I thought App State's defensive ends were just, you know, they're really good players. You know, you watch them get after Texas A&M and, and uh, you're like, we need to try to take off as much heat on these tackles as we possibly can. But I really thought that we just kind of narrowed everything down and got our best players on the field that were healthy. Like we're still a little bit beat up, but if that was the main thing that we tried to do was just keep it simple. Let the kids execute, get the ball in play and uh, uh, let them go make some plays. And that's the first time that, uh, you know, we, we made some routine plays. And and uh, that's something that's been kind of missing over the past few weeks. But, uh, you know, it's, it's nothing really changed with the play calls. It was just really just kind of the – you know, the personnel that we got out there and, and and just kind of the execution side of it because, you know, like these kids play hard, they fight, you know, I never question that at all, but sometimes our execution is very inconsistent and uh, they went out there and they played a pretty clean football game. Coach, I'm from Cedar Park. You got a couple uh, really good players from Cedar Park there and the Bell Brothers, Levi and Brian. Kind of what have they brought to that defense, you know, maybe not even just on the field, but just in the locker room, you know, as leaders, that kind of stuff? Yeah, no, they've been awesome, man. Like they, uh, they, they're having a really good year too. You know, Levi is probably, you know, statistically one of the like the better D line. Um, one of the better D linemen out there right now, but uh, uh, his brother Ben is uh, a, a great edge pass rusher as well. And, and and these two guys love the game. Like I'm saying, they put everything they got into the game. Like uh, it's kind of like insane on how how crazy they are about the game. Like they they're they're always talking about you know their diets and they do bullet blood work and they talk about you know the the effects of how that like maybe a certain like food you know affects how they how they sleep or how they play or you know it's 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 pretty 
intense on what they do. They, they're, they're gym rats. They're in there lifting all the time. They're, they're always working on their defensive line moves. And uh, I think that's kind of rubbed off on everybody else. You know, it just shows the passion that they have and, and how much this game means to them. And, and uh, they see the success that they're having out there on the field. And, uh, you know, you, you see all the extra work they're putting in. And, and once you like early in the year, you didn't see very many guys, you know, up there getting the extra work in. And now gradually you're seeing more and more guys come up into the facility and uh, get the extra work in with uh, the Bell brothers. So they've already made a huge impact on our program. And, uh, you know, we're halfway through the season. And then I can see them, uh, you know, continuously building off of what they're already doing right now. And uh, uh, they're on the on path to have a really good, uh, really good season, both of them. And then as a play caller on offense, when the defense is not only getting stops, but they're scoring points as well, does that change anything at how you approach the game this year or how you feel like your offense needs to score points because the defense is playing better that, you know, maybe you don't have to take as many chances or throw the ball around as much or, you know, how does that, how does that impact your offensive playing calling with the complimentary football? Yeah, no, you're exactly right. The complimentary football side of it. And that's a, that's the first time we've done that, you know, in, in a while here at Texas state. And, and you look at the first half and, uh, we jumped out on him, you know, it's 24 to three at halftime. And, uh, you know, we just, we were playing football at that point. We were doing our, our, our execution on offense and defense and playing complimentary ball. But when you got into the second half and, and Tory Spears got that pick six to make it 30 to three, uh, yeah, your philosophy changes. And so did theirs. We got them out of their game plan. You know, I would have never, uh, would have thought that App State would have thrown it 53 times in the second <laughs> half, uh, which is, you know, uh, is is not the, their game. So we got them out of their game and uh, it allowed us to kind of get into more of a, a four minute type uh, situation of ball control, run clock and and try to do high efficient plays. And and uh, our guys executed it pretty well in the second half. And uh, uh, but that yeah, like when the defense is playing well and we and we are sustaining the lead, uh we were kind of playing that whole game of, you know, let's make it a three possession game and kick field goals way like, you know, burn a lot of time, kick field goals. And, and, uh, you know, uh, once we got them to burn their timeouts, you know, we knew that the game was pretty much over at that point. And uh, a lot of that has to do with how high, high of a level our defense is playing right now. One uh, couple for me, a couple more for me, I should say defensively, you guys have really hit a new level this season. What kind of has clicked for Z Spav and that side of the ball is just more continuity there this year um, as compared to pr compared to last where you guys were kind of bringing in different guys. Obviously, the secondary is healthier than it's been in the past as well. Um, but in particular, we mentioned the Bell brothers and the rush defense. But you know what what kind of clicked in the off season and execution wise for those guys this year? I think it's the depth. I think that, uh, you know, we recruited really well up front and, you know, you got the Bell brothers there and then you have Jordan Rebels who's already kind of mm -hmm. came back and uh, you have Nelson Mabanasor, uh, who's a, a very solid player as well. Um, you know, uh, it, you just kind of look at like, and you also got Dominique Ratcliffe and Nico Isidore, Isidore there. They're, those guys are uh, a lot more depth where we don't have to like, full sell like you know completely ch change our entire scheme when we do have injuries or you know like we can stay in a four down front we can get a pass rush we can play some more zone we can protect guys in the back end you know uh you know we are healthier in the back end but uh you know we still have um you know some issues with some depth you know uh, we're losing some to the transfer portal mm -hmm. uh but you know like it with the with us having a better front in terms of just the being able to pass rush and not having to pressure all the time uh, allows us to protect a lot of these guys and i, th I think that's you know what uh has really made it easier on zach because you know in the past like if we had an injury go down then we'd have to sub into a three down you know front and we'd have to start playing some of that drop eight just to protect some guys and you know you'd have to either sell out for the run or sell out for the pass now we can play base defense and and uh you know do what we want to do you know on a consistent level in just terms of just the operational side of it because we've got some pretty good personnel right now and uh for me you know, since I since I was a student there a while back, and then even when I covered the team, you know, after two weeks, looking at James Madison, the loss two two years ago or two weeks ago, I should say, it was it's hard to imagine that you would get a home crowd like that that you guys got last week. Even you know, with I guess my question is, talk about the administration and kind of the support you've kind of seen in that regard, because it's very easy for them to look at, oh, they lost, however, to James Madison and not show up, right? But you guys, like you mentioned, get one of the best crowds. I mean, I think Bill Colhane, a uh, former play, uh, color guy, said it was the probably the best crowd he's seen since the 2014 win over Arkansas State, which got them to six or seven wins that year. You know, what what have you seen? Has there been a, a noticeable change on your part that you've seen from the administration and kind of the overall support of the program? Well, I think uh, I think the the biggest change has been our new president. 
You know, our new president's done such a, he's such an active guy. I, you probably follow him on Twitter. I sure. think the guy's a machine. I think he's a robot. <laughs> like he, he's just everywhere. And, you know, and, and he's really just trying to engage the community and, and get more people involved with not just football, with with everything Texas State. And uh, that's the, the biggest difference I've seen, you know, is, is just how engaged our president is, how active he is in, in terms of like if you like, you'll look up in the in the middle of the game on the Jumbotron and he's in the student section and he's like shooting. He's shooting T-shirts out of a gun to, to the crowd and then he's over in the band with the band and then he's with the strutters and then he's with the cheerleaders and he's with the, uh, the fraternities and sororities and then he's down on the, like on the sideline shaking all the players hands like I'm saying he's, he's just active and and uh, he's just engaging more people in this community and, and getting them to come out and and uh, he, he really is. Uh, he really loves sports, you know, like he really does believe that, you know, sports drive the university forward. And and uh, he's always about, you know, fine doing whatever he can to, uh, you know, make sure that like the football team's good or just, you know, any sport in general. Because at the end of the day, when you have successful uh, sports or you have like a night like what we had Saturday night and a great crowd and a, and a great win, uh, you know, that's going to increase enrollment and that's going to bring more people back to Texas State. So that, that's the biggest thing I've seen is uh, is uh, the how active our president is. Coach, last question before we let you out of here. Obviously, a big win, and now you got to go on the road. The Sun, sun Belt always, you know, tough week in and week out. How do you go about, you know, letting your team have fun and celebrate that App State win and everything that comes with it, but also getting letting them know that it doesn't really matter if we don't back it up with good performances. Yeah, no. Again, you're exactly right on that as well. We've been addressing that all week. I, I thought the kids, uh, I thought the guys, you know, handled it well. They they enjoyed Saturday night, and you know, and deservingly um uh, but like after that they came in sunday and then we locked it back in they, they know that we're halfway through the season and we still got a lot of ball to play and we know how many ups and downs are in this sunbelt league and how tough it is and you just you watch how crazy college football is in general right now but uh that these kids understand the importance of trying to you know put another consistent game back to back you know like we've been struggling on the road we're on three on the road we're three and oh at home and and uh they're they're pretty adamant on trying to find a way to figure it out versus a really good troy team i think troy's one of the you know one of the better teams in the league right now playing at a high level you know they're you know they lost to hell uh, on a hell mary to app state which was an insane game but besides that like they've been they've been consistently just dominating teams by playing complimentary football and uh, it's going to be a tough challenge it's their homecoming game good crowd uh, versus a team that's playing very well together and but th at the end of the day like every week's going to be that way and and our kids understand the importance of you know continuously getting better throughout the course of of our season and and uh we we've got to keep chipping away but like the thing i like about them is, is you know every wednesday we meet with our leadership group and uh you know they really talk about the importance of you know just bringing people along and and having energy on the road and and uh being really locked in with a great sense of urgency uh uh to, to beat teams like this so you know they're they're, they're engaged right now and uh, you know, I, I know that they're not, uh, uh, you know, overlooking Troy, you know, or anything of that nature. They they, they enjoyed their moment last week. Uh, we're Sap State, and I think they're ready to try to go, you know, take another shot at another great team this weekend. All right, Spav, always a pleasure, man. You go you go finish that game planning for Troy. <laughs> I appreciate you guys, man. Hope all is well. All right, Later. same to you. Bye.